Hello and uh, good evening. Welcome to the new school. My name is Karen Kooni. I'm the director of the Virally Center for Art and Politics and really delighted to welcome you to the very first Public Art Fund talk at the new school of the season um, with Adrian Villar Rojas. At the Virally Center for Art and Politics, our programs predominantly focus on current affairs and political issues debated in exchange with artists, faculty, sociologists, scientists, curators, etc. We might be tackling issues such as media representation and dignity of the image, the Syrian refugee crisis, or leading up to the presidential elections post-democracy. Three times a season, this pattern gets slightly disturbed in the most delightful ways when we partner with the Public Art Fund to present the Public Art Fund lectures at the New School, a single artist talk that invariably occupies an exceptional moment in the otherwise multivocal um, series of activities that, we, that are our own. Adrian Villarrojas provides such an intriguing interruption from routine. There is, of course, his extraordinary work, monumental and ephemeral at the same time, but he breaks our pattern in other ways. For instance, when in an interview with uh, Freeze magazine about two years ago, in response to the question about political art, he explained or declared, and I'm quoting, I am not that type of artist. I think my work has political aspects if you want to see them, end of quote. For us, it is irresistible to not take this statement at face value and to embrace the provocation and consider precisely this um, in, uh, statement as an invitation to look at the political aspects of the work, which is certainly what I will be doing tonight. I thank the Public Art Fund for years of exceptional collaborations, and in particular, I'd like to thank Andrea Hickey, my, uh, the curator at the Public Art Fund, and my colleague, who will now introduce Adrian um, Villarrojas. So thank you very much, and thank you all for coming. Thanks everybody and thank you Karen and everybody here at the New School, Pam Tillis and your team for all your help in organizing the series annually um, each semester. I'd also like to thank our latest addition to the Public Art Fund team, our new associate curator Emma Enderby for her work in organizing the series this year. We do have a very exciting season coming up and I'm very happy to introduce Adrian Villarrojas as the first presenter. Following Adrian's lecture, we will have a very rare opportunity to hear from Issa Genskin, who will be speaking with Randy Kennedy from the New York Times here on March 2nd, on the occasion of the opening of her new public project, Two Orchids at Doris Friedman Plaza this spring. For the final talk of the season, Peter Fishley will join us on April 25th for a special presentation on public art and the amazing projects of Fishley and Weiss. We're very happy to present Fishley and Weiss's iconic mural, How to Work Better, on Houston Street at the corner of Mott, which also coincides with the opening of their retrospective exhibition at the Guggenheim on February 5th. So tonight we have the pleasure of welcoming Adrian Vilhar Rojas. Adrian is best known for his large, monumental, architectural and sculptural installations. Using clay, concrete, organic materials and contemporary found objects, his work often suggests a radical temporality, future mutations, alternative worlds, and apocalyptic or mythological realities. Adrian's process can be best described as part rhizomatic research and part collaborative performance. And he suggests that working at a scale that is both colossal and intimate can only be achieved through shared labor and discovery. It's very exciting watching his team work together. They're, they have a kind of complex um, equilibrium and ecology in their working method. Many of Adrian's projects are inherently site-specific and they reflect the history and conditions of both, site, of both the site and the form and the material of the work itself. 
Nowhere is this more true than in the work he has created for outdoor public spaces, which have ranged from the fantastic life-size fiberglass bestiary, which he installed on the Sea of Marmara at the Istanbul Biennial this year, to the conversion of a park into a matrix of sculptural forms at Documenta 13 in Castle in 2012, and most recently in New York, an abstract sculptural pr procession, which was shown he here on the High Line in 2014. Adrian has been the recipient of numerous awards, oh, sorry, <laughs> including the Zurich Art Prize at the Museum House Constructive in 2013, and the ninth Venice Prize at the, in the 54th Venice Biennial in 2011. I'm just gonna pause this, sorry, Adrian. Um, his most important solo exhibitions are Phantasma at the Moderna Musée, recently in 2015, The Evolution of God at the Highline, which I just mentioned, Films Before Revolution at the Museum House Constructive, Today We Reboot the Planet at the Serpentine Gallery in 2013, La Innocencia de los Animales in MoMA in 2013, and Documenta, which I've already mentioned. He's participated, participated in various biennials, including the Sharjah Biennial the United, in the United Arab Emirates, the Havana Biennial in 2015, the 12th and 14th Istanbul Biennials in Turkey, the 5th Moscow Biennial in Russia, and the Shanghai Biennial in China in 2012. Adrian is represented by Marion Goodman Gallery in New York and Karim Manzuto Gallery in Mexico City. Please join me in welcoming Adrian to the stage. So they told me I was able to sing le very late because I, I wish I could be doing something else. And I, and I hope uh, what I'm going to say makes some sense. Um, so firstly, let me take care of this. So well, thank you so much for the invitation. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everybody at the New School and the Public Art Fund. Um, yeah, the PowerPoint you're going to see has like a selection of like projects I've been doing from 2008 to 2015. Uh, it's fine, it's going to be running like this, so don't worry. And you have this tiny text here that I hope you can read and will give you more or less a description of where this thing happened and how it happened. And one thing that I had never done but I, th I thought it was like a good idea to do is like uh, show the posters that have been part of I mean, some of these projects, not all of them. We have something like 200 images, so I, I guess we, we are going to be fine, as usual, overreacting. And um, so one thing I, um, I have to say is that um, I, I am this moment in my life where like, I really don't trust anymore in like I mean, verbal communication. So I, I really don't think what, what will happen with this like, moment we are going to share. I really, really want to believe that there's something else that, uh, or some, some other way of like communication, some sort of like a much more like, a, I don't know, efficient way to transfer information. So what I did was like, I mean, create this kind of a script with all these points and lines. And, it, and in a way what, what this like script should do is like uh, create a guideline of like a, how to represent uh, this person who's called Adrian Bichar Rojas. Uh, that's the Argentinian way to pronounce my name. Um, and yeah, my English may may not work. It will go on and off. So this is something you will have to bear. Uh, you can stop me if I'm, I'm not making sense. I mean, bro, don't stop me now. I know I'm not making sense yet, but um, wait. <laughs> and one super important thing that I don't want to forget is like, uh, I used to believe that there was like a, that these things were meaningful, I, not the, well, these things too. But I mean, these conversations, I mean, this like, I, I used, well, not long ago, I was a, an art student and I was like, I mean, when I, I found some, I mean, artist talk of some artists I, I would be interested in, I was like, I mean, this is a moment where like, this is a kind of a definitory, like a moment of definitions. 
I want to see how this person, like in a way, embodies his work, or how this person, person, like, creates meaning, transfers meaning to an audience, right? I think it's not anymore the case. I I do not think that's something perhaps achievable, fully achievable, or it's not in my case. I think I'm. What I'm proposing to myself nowadays is like to be in this state of like, uh, I, I'm lost. I'm basically lost. And this is the way, this fictional state is the state I want to be in. It's, in, it's incredibly important for me to be in this moment. And I, I guess what we are seeing here, as I said, is like a selection of works doing from 2008 to 2014. Then we will see much in depth uh, 2015, but I, I guess in a way, this amount, this huge amount of work, in a way, is and, and this kind of tiny little place I create for myself, is uh, this evidence, this like concrete space where I'm lost in. So I, I don't believe anymore that there's, there should be any like I, I won't be able to like I'm very sorry to transfer any like uh, crystal clear things about what I do. I'm going to use the words things perhaps a lot. That's another word I want to coin and use a lot because I don't. I, I want to reprogram myself. I, I wish I would be able not to use words like art, art institutions, public art. Uh, I don't know, like practice. Well, practice is kind of useful, but um, I will do my best, honestly. So, and I think since I'm 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 talking about like not having studio. I'm sorry, not 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 tr trusting in like language. I think it's important to say that I, I don't have a studio. There's no, there's no space. I mean, like a laboratory space where, like, I mean, there's some. I mean, part. Of, I mean, collaborators or assistants researching on materials. There's not not such a thing. And when I was like doing all this research for this talk, I felt like this, like, you know, like college st student researching on on whatever I am. And and I'm like, uh, this is a studio too. So this will be a temporary workshop where I'm going to be working or trying to figure out something. So that's, that, uh, that was something I, I want to say. So why 2015 is more developed on images? When I started to, in a way, receive proposals during 2014, it was like a very lucky year where I, I was like receiving all these amazing proposals and many of them I was not able to say no, very unfortunately. Uh, or very luckily, who knows, for better or worse. And I designed 2015 to be my last year in my career ever. I mean, that was my, my plan. I was going to somehow, in some way, retire. So, and actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like proposing myself that thing in a way. So I'm, I'm, I'm this like ghost that's here. And there's, there's this like a uh, constant fantasy on disappearance and this constant fantasy on like how I could program my disappearance. And this is some, something that I guess we will, we will talk a lot about. Like, I mean, I will go recurrently into this subject of like disappearing or how I could merge myself with this group of collaborators as Andrea was talking about. Um, so this is, this is something that when, when 2015 started to, like, in a way, uh, be programmed or designed, I was like, I want, I want to do everything. I want to finish everything. Every tiny possible thing that I could ever do or thought of has to happen in that year. So let me t check my notes. And I think one important thing to mention about 2015 is that projects happen in many different places. Some were running in parallel, some were opening very close one to the other. And this was, a, let's say, a situation I wanted to take advantage in. I very basically experimented on like connecting projects when I was doing the Argentine Pavilion during the, for the Venice Biennial in 2011. I then had this big commission uh, in Paris. We saw some images, this like big, like kind of tube pipe form. It's fine. I mean, I, I'm I'm not going to be referring to very like uh, specifics of my work. Then, if someone has questions, it's fine. But I, I don't really, I'm uh, I'm not interested in talking about like I mean, I, when I was doing this thing, I thought that color. What I I really don't think that. I really hate 
to talk about these things. I'm not interested in like the making. I'm honestly, I'm I'm terrible. I'm not a very handy person. Like I, I don't like fabrication. I mean like handwork. I I really do appreciate the ethics and politics involved in like the handwork, handcraft, and the the use of those and the outcome of those. But I'm, I'm don't consider myself a handyman. I, th I think there's some people perhaps here that have seen me like try to, to do things with my hands and I'm, I'm terrible. So my, my work is mainly writing. My work is mainly documenting. But I, I guess perhaps we will get there eventually. We'll see. Uh, I, you have to tell me how I'm doing with time. And you're not allowed to leave. So we're closing that thing. And I'm sorry you're staying here with me. If it's boring, I'm sorry too. I will do some jokes and you have to laugh yeah, from time to time. So this was like, as I said, 2015 was this year of like everything happening at once. This year of like, uh, uh, I did having this fantasy of retiring and disappearing and merging somehow with my team. And we are going to now talk a little bit about the clay period. This is something I, I this, this term, in, term I'm, I'm just starting to use this term of like the, the, the clay period. It's a very silly term, but I guess it's useful. Um, and when, when, I, when we get to this chapter, one very important thing to say is um, I don't consider myself a sculptor. I think I, I really would like to like say two little things about it or a few little things about it is like, when I, in 2008, first like did my, my first very big show with clay in Buenos Aires, I was like, I mean, this young, like kind of starving art, kind of trying to be an artist in this house I had back then, and I found some clay there. And clay was very approachable. It would perform, it was easy to use. It had like, I mean, these memories from being this uh, child going to these art, art classes where, you know, you do ceramics, you do pottery, you, you know, do tiny things. and. And that was thanks to my, my mother, who was always pushing me and my, my brother to do two million things. And we could never watch cartoons or get to do any of the other, other, other things. And also, yeah, making me study English. So the thing with clay, I mean, with me being a sculptor, is like when I was like, when I found clay and I, and, I, and I found this kind of like material that was, as I said, performing, I was like, what, what are the things you shouldn't do? This was my very basic, naive understanding of like the, the art system in, or what was art from my very narrow perspective of being this, this yeah, art, young artist in Argentina. It's like, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't rely on narration. You shouldn't be like a sculptor in the very traditional figurative way. You shouldn't use clay. I mean, who cares about clay? You shouldn't like be, I mean, romanticize your work. So there were all these, like, you shouldn't rely on, like, a, I mean, big spectacle installations or, or spectacular installations or, or rely on a spectacle. So all this list of no's became some sort of my program. I was like, okay, if I make these no's work as yes, or potential yes, this could be a space for myself. So this is very important of this very first period. It's very important for me to mention. and. Then the other thing is like public art. Public art is like a, a something also never never came to my mind. I never, I never thought of like I, I'm going to do some sort of public art. It was more about like after this very first show in Buenos Aires, I was like, okay, how I can like I mean I'm very inconstant person, absolutely inconstant. Per my presence is not constant. So I guess this is the very first moment of epiph epiphanic moment where I'm like how could I problematize my existence? How can I, like in a way, yeah, br break down? Like, I mean, this, like affect my existence. I guess I could have stayed in Buenos Aires, I had this nice workshop and I, and I was like, I mean, that, that very first show was kind of successful so I could still be there doing clay pottery kind of objects and, and shipping them. But I felt somehow I had to like, yeah, like break something, like break something inside inside of me, perhaps I don't know. So the the the, the 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 this this image of like going out into the wild, find some sort of again very romantic idea, going and finding some sort of adventure, occurred to me and and happened to me. So that's how I began to 
like start to think about the outside, but I, actually I wanted the outside to be a modeling agent. I, I wanted the, the outside to be part of the work. It was never thought as public, public art, you know? So I think it's important to like in a way renegotiate this terminology when, when I, uh, someone talks about my work, let's say. I, n I never ever consider, consider what I do public art in a way, even though it could be, I don't know, as I don't consider myself a sculptor, I'm very sorry. Um, so, and then I think, and um, perhaps we will get there, I don't know if we'll get there because this is page two and, and I don't know how we're doing with time. But um, I think this very simple, silly feeling of like, I want some adventure, I want to, I mean, I want to go to Shuaia, to the south, of, I want to travel. I guess the, the, what I would say in a very simple way is I, I wanted to travel and move, then move to what could be more like interaction, political interaction with institutions, let's say. And, and, and that, that would be like the agency of how, what I think when I, I think about like public art. Um, so this clay period is like um, a training process. It's a process of, of like exchange with my collaborators. And it goes more or less from 2008 to 2000, let's say 13, more or less, and, and it's a moment of validation of gestures. And it's a moment, as I said, like of, of creation of some sort of like language that was slowly crystallizing and would enable me to do things like what we are seeing here. It may be running faster, this PowerPoint, so we will see where it leads us to. Um, and one thing very important to say about again, the clay and, and the clay period is that the mixture I usually use is clay and cement. And clay is mineral life. Clay is basically, I mean, clay is dirt, and clay is like all the life, all the life that died on planet Earth in a way. All that was alive and died and nurtured and reached Earth. And cement is this thing we came up with more or less since the Romans and enabled us to basically construct everything that holds our existence. So I think the, the, the connection between, the, between these two materials, it's, it's incredibly important for me. And with whatever formed the earth, I'm bringing it up, mixing it again together, and recreating again what's the con I mean, whatever is the content on earth. I mean, that's why I don't care if it's abstract sculpture, I don't care if it's a triangle or a bear or an animal, an elephant, whatever, I, I, don't, I don't see those difference. They don't exist for me. I, 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 sometimes I get this, this like question where like, what do you think about like when, when, when you go into abstract sculpture and then figurative sculpture and then organic, I, I don't, I'm sorry, that's something, I, I, my perception of like how whatever surrounds me goes like into a totally different direction. I'm not going, I'm not saying I'm going beyond that, that direction actually or in any way I'm, I'm smarter or better, but it's like something I'm blind to somehow. So, and one thing that I don't want to forget from that, I'm, I'm saying all the same things, um, is that these very first projects, like uh, the first gallery, the clay show in Ruth Ben Sakar in Buenos Aires, the, the whale in the forest in Ushuaia, this like kind of weird lizard or dinosaur that had this like grungy girl on top. All these very first projects didn't have any labels. There was not my name nor the name of my collaborators. There was no title, there was nothing. So you would face, I mean, even with this gallery show, I was really not a very well-known artist. So there was some sort of like, a, in a way, attempt to, to really work this, this sounds extremely silly, but as nature, we are of course part of nature. I don't believe in like this difference that we, we already created about like us and nature, but I really wanted to, to work as some sort of like a, agent, like as weather, or as, as a tree, or as, 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 as rain. So all these very first projects never were labeled, and this is something very important for me too. So, moving forward, then, I find, well, in this very first period also appears something that I call the, the, the alien gaze, which is like, I was so sick back then, I still am, I was so sick of Duchamp. Um, I find it a, an incredibly oppressive figure, 
I, I don't think we, I mean, we humans will create another Duchamp. There's no time. I mean, we won't exist that long to create another interruption in art history as strong as this guy was. So I was like incredibly depressed, incredibly depressed. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm also a very ambitious, uh, egoistic person. So I was like, I, I, I won't be Duchamp. I already know. I should be like, you know, like <laughs> now, what time is it? No, I'm not. Okay, failed. It won't happen. So I was like, okay, what's the only way to win this battle? It's like, we have to mourn art. We have to go to the very end. We're going to go to the end of our, I mean, the end of human presence, presence on planet Earth. And I'm going to work on that very specific section of time and investigate what could be the last artwork. It doesn't care if it's good. It's going to be the last one. It's going to turn off the lights. So when that moment, I mean, that thing happened around 2008 and nine, I was like, I felt such a relief because I, I really, I mean, of course I love Duchamp, who doesn't? But on the other side, I, again, I think the only thing we are doing is like eating that corpse, right? Like, I mean, and, and we are only basically work, I'm putting it in a very extreme way, but I guess it, work, it works for me to put things in very extreme ways. Um, so this, this was like a, a very like a key moment in my thinking. And this I could relate to the, let's, this idea of the end of the world and, and would be easy to say, and I, th I think that I, even I, I, got I got caught up in, in this idea of, of, yeah, of course, I'm from this generation, like born in the early 80s, exposed to Akira and Ghost in the Shell and Japanese animation and comic books and the end of the world is so present. I totally f fell in that trap. And then I met this curator that came to Rosario and she visited me, I think it's, and, and she told me something about like, all, and it's, I guess from, as an Argentine, and please, I don't know if there are any Argentines here, but uh, uh, it's a very like delicate subject. And I, I, and I, again, well, I mean, we were talking about like, if my work is politi political or not, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that, but uh, of course we had like disappeared people, we had dictatorship. Even before that, we have the what we call the desert campaign, and before that, we have like the basically Spanish colonization of the whole continent. I mean, well, your part was British, our part was like Spain, and Brazil was the only country that was colonized by Portugal. So, I speak Spanish because I mean there was some interruption that 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 world basically ended, and there was a new world coming. And this was a huge massacre. This, that was a pretty apocalyptic moment of, I mean, of, of uh, human uh, history. Even myself, I mean, like I, sometimes when I'm, and this is something that took me also a long time to understand. I mean, like I come from a, like a, what you would call here a pretty white Jewish family. My mother is like, all her family comes from Russia. My father comes from Peru. And that's the reason I look like the way I do. And even myself, I felt very alien in that family. I mean, I, I was always like, I mean, my dad looks like me, but then what's going on with this person who's my mother and my grandfather? <laughs> so it was always this, this like, I felt always like displaced. So I think that that alien look perhaps has a lot to do with like having to like always renegotiate my, my being in, 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 in this family. So, um, it's good that I, do, I did these notes. I'm very happy I did these notes. Um, da -da. So I, how are we doing with time? Because I, I have lots of times. Great, lot, lots of time. Not times, time. <laughs> um, um, so I think there, there are four moments of what I call the closure or deconstruction of this clay period. <laughs> One is this film I did uh, that I'm, I'm a huge fan of film and filmmaking. And I'm, so in 2012, I, I gathered what was my team back then. It was like kind of the, the same people that did probably the, the documenta and Venice Ballena. We, we, were, we were back then something like 12 people. And I brought them to Sao Paulo to a place called the Crystal House. It's a beautiful architectural masterpiece by Lina Bobardi, 
a key figure of like the modernist movement in, in, in Brazil. And we spent three days um, creating a film, let's say. So everybody involved in my work, perhaps let's say everybody involved in like this like kind of sculpture, installation, ambient making, became this sort of like a film company. So we had actors, we have scenographers, we have a photograph, I mean like cinematographers, also, I incorporated into the team like very specific like um, elements from the film, uh, let's say field, of course, we, because we needed assistance. But even the designer of all my publications, all my books, her name is Vanina Escolavino. She was also part of like the, the creation of the credits of the film. So I now know that this PDF will run and I will keep on talking and it will be dark. So we will see what we do. I maybe make it run all over again, it's fine. Good. The other one had music, so this one is much better. <laughs> so um, this moment of like, it was a, a quite important moment because uh, it's, it, it, it meant like this, uh, this film is called Lo que el fuego me trajo, What Fire Brought to Me. That's the name of the first clay project in Buenos Aires. And it's a moment where in a way I turned all of us, including myself, into fictional characters. In a way, fiction and, and, and levels of, of like meta language are quite important for my practice. Um, documenting, documentation, filming, recording, writing is very important for whatever I consider what, what I do, my part in this thing. So this is a moment of like important renegotiation with our positions. This film went to the Locarno Film Festival, whatever, and even got reviews. And my, like, let's say, collaborators, constructors, are, I mean, sculpture, fab these, these sculpture fabricators of sculptors became actors. And this is like a very interesting, like a uh, transverse of, of like uh, fields for me. This is a moment of like collapse of like, of um, let's say realities, because we, we were not meant to be, of course, actors, and they were being addressed as actors. So this moment of distance and renegotiation is quite important. This is one of, of this one, these moments. And I want to make a little, like now, um, footnote to talk about, like, what about this team? Because I'm, I'm, we've been talking about the collaborators, assistants. I mean, I don't use that term. Like, I don't believe in, like, I mean, I, I, would, I would never use, like, that, that, that word. So it's more about like collaborators, actors, I use actors. So, and what are we? Are we a factory? Are we a farm? Are we a landscape? As I said, I don't, I don't trust in communication, like verbal, oral communication that much. I mean, of course I use it a lot. As you can see, I, I've been talking nonstop. I wish we had some piano player or something like some artist did, I mean, you told me, but it's fine. So, um, I use that, like, I mean, we come to this world totally hurt. I mean, we created, la language is this accessory, this artifact we created to basically be able to translate emotions and, and needs. But I, I don't think it's in, efficient enough, as I said. And this is something that I, I try to, to in, a way, in a way, I mean, in, in an act every time I'm working with my team. It's either talking, it's either doing drawings, it's either coming with photographies. I mean, there's no one way I work with them or we work all together. I, let's say, work as a, some sort of like theater director. And I, you know, my work is like after research and investigation of a certain site or, I mean, space where, where, where we are going to work, I, I, in a way, select who could be from the team the most adequate for this. Though in the, in the, in the years we've been working, they also renegotiate their positions. They also request for newer tasks or challenges. So it's not even myself who says you have to do this or that. It's more like I guess I, I am this like fluid or enabler that creates the better conditions for them to give their best. And this again goes back to this idea of like am I creating some sort of like a living organism or, or machine? I mean is it a machine? Is it, is it a living organism? Is it a farm? Is it a factory? Or is, is it all these things all together? and goes again to this fantasy of disappearing. When I was designing in 2015, I was like thinking really about like, 
this this very key point. I mean, how uh, how uh, how I mean, it's so so difficult for us to think about ourselves disappearing or not being here or not being absent. So this this is something that it's recurrent, and I will say it many times. Uh, but it's something that's you know working inside of me, I guess. And one very extreme example of how my collaborators became actors or how we went from being some sort of film company because at first I was like using that metaphor, we are a film company. But I think talking about the film company talks, uh, means some more stratified work, some more like very designed, very labeled, very structured positions. When once like when I got to 2013, end of 2000, actually, yeah, end of 2000, it was, yeah, end of 2013, I started to use the metaphor of the theater company and myself as a very basic director, let's say, and them as performers. So with this, one of, one of my collaborators called Ariel Torti, he was part of this project called the Brick Farm. I'm going to talk about the Brick Farm in two seconds. And he got, I mean, extremely engaged with that site and basically came to, I mean, her, her, his first big project with, actually, well, he's been working with me since 2011, crazy. But it's interesting the case because this is a person who's been always in conflict with myself. He's always criticizing myself. He always criticized the amount of hours we work, how, how we work, how we move. And I think this is a, an incredibly generous um, uh, feedback from him. Also on the other side, when, when he got so engaged, as I said, with this place like uh, called the Brick Farm, I went with him and we visited this uh, theater director I'm a huge fan of, whose name is Federico Leon. He's from Buenos Aires. And I presented the case. So I, 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 go, I went to, to, to visit Federico as if I were some sort of like, I mean, I, I, as, if, as if he was some sort of like a psychoanalyst or something like that, very Argentinian, I know. So, uh, and, and I said to him like, what do I do with this person? What do, what do we do with him? Because I, uh, I mean, I'm not only asking him, and this happened in London, I'm not only asking him to work as a carpenter or as a, mason or as a constructor but what happened in london is that i asked him to work as a brick farm and i, I don't even know what it means i mean like it, it he has to work as a place as a site of fabrication of construction of like things happening is he a landscape is he a, I, I don't know what is what is he but his precise task when we did the serpentine cycle gallery project was to basically interfere with our work and become some sort of force i mean contradictory force with us. And I guess that's how he interpreted the, the, this role of being the brick farm. But I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know if I've been clear enough, but I, 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 it was very important for me to, in a way, extreme his position. And as I said, I mean, as years went by, he's been perhaps the, the, the strongest opposing force of whatever I've been proposing to do. I, I would say, like, imagine everything I've, I've been showing you. This is a person that's been saying all the time, you shouldn't. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. And on the other side, he's incredibly, uh, he's probably one of our also main figures that uh, when, when it goes to designing, like, I mean, far, when it goes to farming and working with organic materials. So this is one moment, that's, that's another thing I wanted to say. So we have this like moment of the film, which is the deconstruction of the, this like um, clay period. And then there's this project called the, the, the work of the, the ocean. This project happened in 2013 no, in Brussels. And basically it's, let's do the following because since this is going to end, I'm going to try to show you this project. I never talk about this project and I'm like, why I'm not talking about this project is so important. So here, just for you to see, these are some stills from this film. So you can see basically my my team acting, let's say. That 
that Cesar Martins, and he's my engineer. And he's actually the first person that forced me, forced me, I'm not saying like he came, to, I mean, face me and talk to me and say like, you need to label people, but actually, it's, or label, like assign positions, sorry. But he was more like uh, such a, an amazing collaborator and, and generous person that he made me understand that it's Im so important to, to give space to the people that helps you and work with you. I mean, real credits, it's not that they don't have space, but real credits and existence. You can pay whatever. I mean, it's like there's no money that, I mean, you, we, I think the, 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 the biggest like uh, exchange we have is like these, these places that, that we all have within like, I mean, this little farm thing we have. So this is the work of the ocean. And this project was basically about creating a house. So this is a, a little uh, kind of a stable renovated by Alvaro Sisa. I'm going to make it very short because I don't want to stop much in this work. But I, And I, I sent two of my collaborators to live in the house and create a house inside this exhibition space that looks like a house. So basically, they live there for two months. I wanted, I mean, I wanted the place to smell like a house. So they cook, they live, they, they would take showers. They would, we make the place have like running water. I mean, all the things you need to, for you know, a house to work as a, as a house. And hidden in this landscape, I had these little figurines that were representations of mostly the Documenta project. But done with epoxy putty, or putty, I don't know how to say it which is like this sort of plasticine that hardens when it dries. So the, the, the very primary thing about my work is like, uh, you know, it's impossible to conserve it, it deteriorates. It's basically, it's uh, the, 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 the quite precise representation of entropy. In this case, these things will stay forever like this. So this is another moment of like uh, distance in the, in the clay period where I was like um, revising what, what about like working with this material all the time and all the time? The woman like really was questioning myself if I should be only this like kind of clay artist or not. But it was like, we are, we, it was too soon for us to, I guess, move forward. I mean, if there's such a thing as moving forward, right? So then I would like to say something about like two sons. That's another moment where like I was like, in way renegotiating the clay period and the brick farm. The brick farm is like this place I found in Rosario. So the brick farm is this place in the outskirts of Rosario and I found it in, by the end of 2012. I was coming from Shanghai and I was absolutely alienated by my you know, profuse traveling. And I guess 2012 was the first year, 2012 and 2013 were the first years where I was like traveling so much. And I got totally lost in my city. So this like uh, project was a place of non-productivity. This is not a pro this this was my response also to the idea of a studio. This was like a, a way to try to also give like employment to my team members after we would finish a project. This was a big like a big question. Like I mean, what what we do when we are not working on on a commission? So this this like a very like. Um, these are the forces that model many projects. It's not only about like honestly what I want to do in terms of like forms or concepts, but also there are very basic needs and that sometimes need to be addressed. So now we get to 2015. So I maybe make it run from 2015. Oh. Basically 2015, what I try to do is like every project would try to in a way address my interests or things like I thought, I mean, places where I could like, I mean, create this, fa I mean, I, wa I wanted to create this fabric and this like real web of connectivity, of connections with these different, all these different projects. And, um, and I make this note, it's so funny, I make a note about like the, the, the apparition of color. And then I'm like, who, who cares? Like, I, I really don't think my practice in those, terms like uh, or color or, or shapes but I, I guess it's important to mention that basically all 2014 was a year of process and 
and thinking that led to 2015. And this was our very first move in this like a map that, that I would say it's 2015. One very important thing that still I'm very intrigued by and interested in is like cleaning, cleansing. This place uh, in Sharsha is the, it's called, I mean, we, we used to call it the, the ice factory. So what basically did at the very beginning is like remove all the plastic outlets, all the wooden frame, frames that would, you know, for the doors, I mean, remove all the doors, remove all the traces of like, I, I just wanted the shell of the building. Just wanted to, and, I, and we spent so much time cleaning the floor, like just sweeping and, and, and brooming. And I think there's something about like this show, I mean, demonstration of affection, that's, that's very important. And I think in this project, it's quite evident the, the, this modality of work. I'm this parasite that lands in a certain latitude and has a permanence let's say two months, let's say three months. And basically, I work with this team that I could say we are all perhaps nomads. So I think the Sharsha Commission for the Sharsha Biennial shows very pretty much perfectly this, um, how rooted we are on when we are working. I mean, how rooted with the space we are when we are working on site. I think every little material that this emirate could offer, we used. Like from different types of sands, uh, sands and soil and fruits and vegetables and shells. Talking to the municipality of, well, this, this is not in Sharsha, this is in Calva, which is a city close to Sharsha. It's from the, the same emirate, but it's a different city. Talking to the municipality, talking to neighbors that were helping, working, on every possible level of interaction with the site, be it economical, political, social. So this is a, like a very clear crystal example of, of how I work. And um, there's something also quite interesting because I think the scale, yeah, I mean, when, when people talk about my work and I go like, ah, why? But I deserve it, I deserve it so much. It's like uh, monumentality and scale. And I've been thinking a lot about that. I, I really question myself. I criticize myself a lot about like the use of scale, the use of work. I mean, how the, the, the sheer representation of work in a way, of labor. And, um, and, then, and then by the time of Serpentine, I think I had to make a note on Serpentine here. Yeah, that's dedicated to Emma. So um, I understood that the scale, the volume of work, talks a lot about like how this parasite works, how much you interact with the institution, the biennial, the space, how much, I mean, talks about time, talk, talks about permanence, talks about a precise reading of the context. I'm not saying if it's good or bad, or, but I, I'm saying it's, it's quite precise because I become a temporary resident of the space. And, I be, and we become, I mean, with my team. So this is not, I mean, these projects are not things that can be achieved by one week of permanence in a place or two weeks. It's, in, it's impossible. And it's impossible from not only like uh, logistics, it's also about, again, affection. This is, uh, this is something I also learned. Perhaps Sharsha is not that case, um, but projects like Istanbul, I mean, the Istanbul Biennial, and the Sandreto Revodengo uh, project in Torino talk a lot also about affection. I mean, how like there's a real like human emotional connection with people there. So this is something also I learned about my work. Let's say how what's the price also we pay, of course, for this lifestyle and how meaningful how meaningful this like time that my collaborators is giving to me. Even I, I just came from Yucatan and I'm, I'm trying to, to get my first property ever it's in the middle of the jungle. I don't have a house, I'm, I'm a migrant, let's say. That, this is what I say now. Also this, 
this year learned, t teach, taught me a lot about like my condition. So I, 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 I was freaking out when I saw the advertisement of the, the talk. <laughs> I was like, I don't live in between Rosario and New York. <laughs> and I don't live anywhere. And, um, and, I, and I think this, this condition, this, this moving condition is reflected on the work so much and has affected so much my, my work and my practice. But I was, anyways, I was going to talk about, I just came from this place where I, I want to buy my first property and I was like, I mean, what's going to be my first property? And I found this crater in the middle of the jungle that has water inside. And I'm like, I mean, there's all these discussions in, 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 inside my team about children, because of course we're getting old. So, and people is having partners and they want to have babies because humans wants, want to reproduce themselves. We like to do that. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's an answer to this anxiety? Because I mean, my engineer, who's like, I mean, a piece of my body, a piece of my soul, he, ha he has found something, someone very important for him and he wants to have babies or my also Noelia Ferretti, who's like, a, let's say my hard drive. Um, She's, she's also in love with someone and wants to also perhaps in the future form a, a family. So I was like, what's an answer to this anxiety? I was like, okay, this first property that perhaps it's a project that will involve the children of our children and our children as well. This is very silly and don't pay attention, pretend I didn't say this thing. But somehow these are the questions I want to answer. That's why when I, when I was writing these notes, I was like, the, the presence of color when talking <laughs> about sharks. And then I was like, oh, it's so boring. I really, again, I, I, I've never felt attracted to technicalities. I never felt attracted to the making of things. I don't like to talk about engineering or any, I'm, yeah, I don't care. So we are now in Moderna Musit in Stockholm. How are, how are we doing? We are good? Okay. I have to wrap it up. I think we may be able to wrap it up. If not, you will have to stay. I'm sorry. No, kidding. And um, so Moderna Musit, I'm just going to say one thing or two things or three. It's uh, the premise of this show was like, what if someone would, be st would still be interested in my work in 100 years in the future? What they would do? Because mainly most of the projects have been like so site specifically I mean made customized for each location, as you can see here. Most of them have disappeared, or transformed, or mutated. And um, so w what about this artist that has this kind of like unsustainable, kind of suicidal practice? Because also one very important thing to say, at least for me, is like up to Moderna Musit, I never shipped a pre-existing piece from one location to the other. Every project you, I mean, I've been doing since people have been hearing about me and even before that, it's a new project. So I'm very aware of how uh, nocive or this thing is. And this is also something that I think a lot about. I keep like, uh, you know, making, trying to make the machine think about that. Um, so that show in Stockholm is about documents. And as I said, I think I, I was very clear, that's my position. I, what basically I do nowadays, and for, I mean, yeah, since maybe two years or three, is write. I, uh, I don't even do drawings. When, I, when, I, when, we, when we design a project, it's mostly my writing. So, what else? Let me check. So I think it's important to say one tiny thing about like the, the 2015 period, which is like, I think the, the clay was pretty clear in its, in its uh, anthropic um, needs and inquiries, right? I mean, the, the, the clay cement projects, they would crack, they would slowly disintegrate, they would like sometimes as the whale in Ushuaia basically we, I mean, get eaten by, by the landscape. But what happened around 2014 is that, 
by the use of like vegetables, fruits, let's say more organic material in a way, I started to coin this term of like mutant objects. And they don't necessarily disappear, but basically what they do is like reshape themselves as, as time progresses and as they dry or as they, they create mold, they, cr they create little life inside of them. And this is, it, it's not programmed. There's no one assisting the process of these, these, these pieces. They, they basically, I mean, I, I, what I, I, I think I, we do is like uh, we connect these things and let them operate. And there's quite a violent moment where like you become some sort of like a spectator, very passive element in your, in your practice or in your work on the things we do. And, uh, and that's quite, quite something I'm, I'm also very interested in, how like the work asks you to, you know, be distant, re retreat, retreat. Um, so I think I kind of, you think it's fine? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Adra. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Thank you. That was fantastic and such a generous look at your process and the work you've done over the last few years. We'll take some questions from the audience. And if you could find a microphone, um, We'll pass it around. Also, don't feel pressure because this is the worst time where, like, not, not, no, no one wants to. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure people have questions for you. Positive. Th uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, you talked about your writing that you're doing now. Do you intend to make that public? Is that part of your public discourse as an artist, or is it a private? It's going to be exercise? so dangerous. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean. Uh, the, the writing is like, uh, it's actually, what, what, I mean, basically, the, it's a sort of mix of uh, an intimate diary. It's, uh, there are some descriptions of ideas I want to do, but are very basic. And, um, and so it goes from like, like, even like I write like March, one, two, three, four, Monday, Tuesday, and we have to, this meeting, this meeting, public art, fun talk, whatever, to like, Today I found this tiny puppy and whatever, and like very silly, stupid comments, like incredibly stupid comments. And I guess, yeah, I mean, actually I'm working on a publication that will, uh, yeah, publish some of the notebooks, but it's a different type of, I mean, that those notebook, notebooks were done uh, during the documenta period, and they are much more like proper notebooks somehow. I don't know if these writings could be, I don't know. It's a, I, yeah, it's a, some some of these things I write are incredibly personal, and I don't think people would be interested. So yeah, it's maybe. <laughs> Adrian, may I now? Adrian, I also had a question about the writing because at first you really started talking about language being such an inadequate tool and such a construct and then you actually started saying that now you don't really use any other tools if you want no drawings no other means of communicating with your collaborators so it's interesting that position you sort of put yourself into there more of a thought yeah i think it's it's i'm i'm also a very contradictory person Honestly, and I really embrace contradictions. And as I said, like, um, I don't know, I've been working like, honestly, like three days on taking notes to make some very basic sense of, and it's not because they are complex. I mean, I'm, it's because I, I can't make sense of these things. So no, I'm just trying to invigorate this, this feeling, this sense of like, I, I don't make any sense. <laughs> but um, yeah, and um. And I think I, I do believe in like this miscommunication. 
I do do believe in like when I'm transferring information to my collaborators, I always I always play with this like gap. And actually what I'm more interested in is in their expectations on whatever they think they should be doing rather than if I'm perfectly saying this David has to be sleeping. You know? <laughs> it's like but actually when, when I, I, I see their faces, sometimes I'm like, okay, today we're going to do apples. So we grab clay and we do apples, like if we were in, you know, in some rehab farm. <laughs> and and there's some that's why also I use, I use the the metaphor of like theater and improvisation because I think there are moments where and this I learned uh, with Federico, there are moments where like you don't know what you're doing and you're lost. I mean the, the actor is lost. He's embarrassed even. You know, he's doing apples. But he's, you know, in London and working for the Serpentine Sackler Gallery, whatever project. And he's doing apples again. And and so this um this use of like uh, this this use of energy is very important. So I, actually, since I'm, con I'm a very contradictory person, I don't trust in language. I do trust in like the mistake, the expectation, it and not not fulfilled expectation. You know, that's um, I don't know if it's answering anything, but um, I have a follow up question to that. That's sort of related. I think something that's very interesting about the images you're showing is this idea of distance and this contrast between a very specific frame of a detail versus the image of a piece as a whole. And I don't know if we were looking through the images, there's sort of examples of universes within a larger universe. And for me, thinking about how your team works, it has the same idea of individuals within a group. And I wonder how much as you're constructing those tiny moments of other worlds inside a bigger project, what kind of freedom each of your collaborators have to, to you know, insert themselves into those moments? Um, I think, again, we go in very different, I guess, I, when I'm directing these things, I go in different like uh, positions. Yeah. There are projects that are incredibly uh, let's say, uh, how to say, like uh, strictly designed from the very beginning, like something like Marion Goodman. Right. Marion Goodman is a show where I was like, I want this David sleeping here, I want the tiles. We're but even within the tiles, you could see, if you look really carefully, there are these details. Every that tiny were... detail we design on Photoshop and wow. in design, okay. and then we use like uh, architectural rendering programs. Okay. There's no improvisation in that project. Not even one, not even one of those pieces was put uh, just because. Not even one, huh? it took one year and a half of preparation, that project. Are, so is we it, can, but improvisation operates in different ways in different places. And then we can okay. go in directions like Sharsha, right. where like there are moments where I'm like, I need this column, whatever pile of material to be in between these, I mean, colors, color range. Why this and that? And then they, they, they may have like room for work. Or I come with some materials that I, and I, I propose a series of combinations and then they rehearse based on those, I mean, like ma materials proposed. Do you use the word rehearsal also as part of that process? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, theater is quite important for me. And theater as a metaphor appears a lot. Like, I mean, the Marion yeah. Goodman show, the curtains, um, the title of the Mexico Kuriman Suto show, the theaters of Saturn. I, I, it's a constant, I mean, place. Interesting. Any other questions? One here. Hi. Um, Hi. Do the people who work for you think of themselves as collaborators? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess I just want to bring up the sense that I, f I hear the word collaborate, collaboration coming up a lot, but there's still a lot of centralized power in like your voice and like what you're commanding in the work. And so I don't know, I guess if, if that's not interesting to you to talk about, that's fine. No, but absolutely. I it's a, it's, um, it's an incredibly like powerful 
source of like uh, energy when you work with people and you achieve things with people. That one thing to say. I think, of course, we have a lot of conflict inside the team. I mean, inside my, my, my group of, of, of like work or collab these collaborators. <laughs> and I think this conflict is always welcome. That's what I was talking about. My best example of a collaborator actor is Ariel, who's always in conflict. He's always in conflict and he always has a space for conflict because I, they basically push me to, I don't know, improve somehow. I don't know if, that, if there's such a thing as improving like a very evolutionary, like linear sense, but um, yeah. And also, I mean, there are very specific, I mean, places for each one of them. I think somehow, and that's why I think there's a level of improvisation and things they, they come with and they propose to the work, but I try to measure that because I think I have to protect their own participation. And some of them, very few, are artists, but most of them, they don't belong to the art world. So in a way, what this thing did is like give them some sort of space they were never looking for somehow. I don't know if I'm, I'm yeah, if it makes some sense, but it's a very good question. And it's something I question myself a lot. And, and keeping this like organism alive, it takes so much energy from me because I'm basically the reason for most of the times and it, all the bad things. You know, you become like, I mean, this like source of pain. It's the best thing that ever happened to me, but it's the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I'm always like receiving that feedback. And of course, it, I take it as part of, of my work. I mean, of my responsibilities, let's say, to keep on this, I mean, keep on making this system run. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Hola. Hola. <laughs> um, I'm going to switch to English now. Um, you talked about 2015 being your um, sort of like the year that you would that would end, or you thought about it as you know disappearing after this, and then you also talked about um, how your team is evolving now in the sense that they also have you know their personal lives. Um, what do you think is going to happen in 2016? Is it is there like a rebirth? Is there going to be? Is do you think that is going to affect your practice as well? Because you're, you know, one with your team in a way. Yeah, I, I think it will, and it's such a healthy, incredible moment. It's 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 great. Life moves. I mean, life work. I this is very silly. Like I mean, I think like we've been one hundred something years trying to, you know, fight this battle against life and art. I feel like in first year of uh, art school, but I'm. Um, I, I, I do I did learn I did learn that um that I affected their lives and I affected my life as I, I but also I learned that there's no way there's no way to do the things in any other way. Also I learned that things will change and I think it's super important that they change. They are teaching me these lessons. I mean my team and I guess their their life will move forward. I and I and that's why I, I try to come up with ideas that could in a way support these changes. You know, I mean, like, I, I was, like, totally fascinated by this trip. I was in the middle of the, the jungle doing my own Lisandro Alonso or, like, Carlos Regada's film moment. You know, this, like, very ambiguous. I don't know if this guy is going to chop me with this, like, a machete or if he's going to just <laughs> cut some, I don't know, like, a weed or something and we will get to this crater. And, and I was like, I mean, we are going to buy this crater and we are going to buy this land and whatever. And that night I was like, what, why am I doing this thing? It doesn't make any sense. And the moment I was like, ah, this could be about children. <laughs> I was so happy because I think, I'm, and this is what I'm also saying, like, I mean, they, they, I need that feedback. I need this constant feedback from them. I need them to criticize myself. I, I cannot tell you how many. <laughs> yeah, I, I received very bad reviews from them. And I, I'm not saying I don't deserve them. I think it's a lot of energy what they are giving. So, yeah, I think the design of this year, even like Marian Goodman is like that other moment of closing this, 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 this period of work. And then Torino was this uh, epilogue, let's say. So we were seeing some pictures. And, um, and basically what I learned here is that perhaps what I, what I will be is like a, a fluid, an agent. 
an agent, a some, an agent with agency. Because what happened here is incredible. The institution was so eager. I mean, I came there and I said, okay, pretend I'm the new director that arrived. We're going to clean this place. We're going to paint it white again. We're going to clean all the windows. We're going to remove all the banners. So I re we close the bookshop. We take off the counter. I work with the mediators. I took over every, every little layer, every as political aspect of the institution was touched by me. But there was this energy in the institution. They wanted it to happen. So I was like, actually, in a way, representing, being like a, a representation of that energy. And actually, I just came from this other place where I may do a project, I'm not retiring. And, um, <laughs> and I found some sort of that energy, and I was like, I found myself having this super crazy, com I, mean, I did, the, I guess, the craziest proposal, and not because I was like, I'm going to come with this elephant made out of clay or who knows what. But because, I mean, the level of like a uh, political interaction that I was asking the institution to let me participate in was out of control. I was like, I was delusional in that moment. But the, the more I, I work into this like introspective, but also in, in retreat position, the more I, I feel myself in this kind of fictional state. I, I myself, you know, so uh, yeah. That thing. I think we have time for one more question from the audience. Oh, I have one more question. Okay. <laughs> we didn't talk so much about it, um, but I'm very curious about how you are inspired by various sites that you've been invited to work in or how you've selected them in different cities um, because your reactions are very unique and immersive and completely transformative in many cases. Yeah, um, I actually had that note there. I didn't say this thing. I, 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 think, I think sometimes I'm incredibly lucky and I have like amazing curators that come with beautiful places. Like in 2015 with Angie Zhu and Caroline Christopa Kargiev, they, they were basically saying, we are thinking, I mean, they were not we, thank God both of them together at the same time? No. So it's like, <laughs> hi, Angie. And I'm like, <laughs> but they came and said, like, we are thinking about this place for you. Right. And that's been lucky. Sometimes I go into the city, into spaces, different, I mean, like parts of the city, and I select a place. And, I, and I, I, what I do is find problems. What I, what I do, I say problems for myself. I mean, right, this is a very yeah. personal opinion, but I, it happened, for instance, in Marian Goodman. So I was like, I remember the first time I came to to do this like uh, first like visit with Marian and she showed me all the gallery and it was such an amazing moment where she was opening all these sliding doors and there was all these people walking behind the doors <laughs> and I was like so fascinated because I was like this is some sort of ant farm <laughs> it's incredible right like you know, all these people but it's like imagine it's a, it's the most perfect metaphor of how an inst art institution or art space works because the walls that are holding the work behind these walls, you have the people that makes the space work. Right, yeah. So, this is some, that, those are the things that like, you know, trigger my mind. And I, and I was like, all these sliding doors, all this movement, all this noise of the sliding doors. So it was like a feeling that like, constant presence of the political like, uh, emancipation of information of the, of the space, in this case, the gallery. And that's how I came with the curtains, let's say. So for me, the curtains was a way of like, enough of these sliding doors, but in a way I, also obscuring how the presence of the, the gallery, I mean, the functionaries of the gallery, I mean, uh, activates the space or, or interacts with the space, I mean, in a way obscuring them, right. but also underlining the, the, their existence because every time they have to go and, you know, like um, if like John has to talk with Jesse or Jesse has to talk with Karina, they have to like open <laughs> the curtains, enter the exhibition space and move to the next space that also had to open, I mean, like, in and out the, the space of the representation, the space where like there's this contract between the gallery, Marian Goodman, and the, and the viewer that receives a, an art experience, right? Yeah. So these are the ways, and, and I have like this silly like a uh, sentence where I say like, I don't do what I like or what I want. My notebooks, my notes don't work that way. So that I have like, one day I want to do 20 animals in the sea. One day I want to put rocks in an institution. It's 
It's not about that way how I work. It's more about like, that's why it's not what I want to do. It's not what the space needs, because also that would be another way of, of saying like, I mean, okay, so this, the, the, I see these mistakes, these problems, but it's more about this, this negotiation between these two poles and how they, in a way, result in what I would say is the, what the space deserves. So, and... That's fascinating, thank you. Oh, welcome. And thank you so much for your talk this evening. Thanks for being here, it's so cold outside, so thank you for coming.